Welcome to Dalek Relaxation for Humans. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Now exhale through your mouth softly. Focus on slowing down your breathing into a calm rhythm. Inhale. You are becoming more and more calm. Exhale. You are feeling more and more relaxed. Inhale. Calm. Exhale. Relaxed. Inhale. Calm. Exhale. Relaxed. Inhale. Calm. Exhale. Relaxed. Continue to breathe slowly and calmly. The aches and stresses of daily life are floating away. Your tension has been exterminated. Exterminated! So, you feeling relaxed? Ah, feeling so zen. Relax, don't do it. Derba derba do do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Powerful Nonsense. Welcome, everybody. It's that time of the week again. That point where you get very excited to listen to me, Jem Yildiz. And me. In fact, more excited to listen to me. Mr. Wayne Ingram. Mr. Wayne Ingram. Yeah. Anyway. So, we're caffeine fueled. Oh my God, too much caffeine. He said three shots and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this ain't going to be good. But That's why I went for tea. I'm buzzing. Well, good. Yeah. Good. I'm buzzing just for you, from the pure excitement of doing powerful nonsense, to be honest. Oh, look at you, you creep. Creep? What are you after? What are you after? Just just people to respect me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Having an identity crisis yes. or something. <laughs> uh, so, we're back again in your ear holes, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope you don't mind us being there, just <laughs> casually, <laughs> casually in the crevices of your ears, but we are there. <laughs> and today we are talking about burnout. Burn. Burn. Burnout. Yeah, this was your idea, Wayne. It was my idea. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. What the hell is burnout? You don't know. You know what burnout is. I know, but I'm just playing the audience. Oh right, yeah, yeah. you're doing the whole. I don't know what burnout is because the audience doesn't know what burnout is. Now tell them. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> a burnout is a phenomenon which happens where yeah. basically you're burning the candle at both ends and you basically lose momentum you lose emotional stability you use lose um uh productivity yourself. You lose yourself. everything working too hard basically mm-hmm. is the problem all right so what we're asking you guys this week is are you on your way to burning out and we're going to sort of cover a few things to look out for along the way because mm-hmm. as we've seen from doing our own little bit of research there are loads mm-hmm. of signs that kind of are right. beaming off that kind of says look you need to slow down right. you need to get things in check and Jem was skeptical when I'd said to him a few times I, I've i been through burnout he was like mm, I could tell he was like <laughs> no I don't think you have burnout I think you're just using it as an excuse but then I showed him the research that I did on burnout and I went look I've done this I've done that I've done this I've done that I've done this he was like Holy shit! <laughs> that explains why you use a miserable beep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, as someone who is uh, recovering from, well, semi-recovered from burnout. Are you a recovering burnouty? I'm a recovering burnouty. Okay, and I've not experienced it, so maybe I should just. Maybe we it. should sell burnout teas. Uh, we'll so you're that. a burnout tea, a burnouty. Okay. You see what I'm? Ge- no. 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 Anyway. Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to kind of go through the, the 12 phases of burnout. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good place to start. Should we also just sort of set, we... set the scene as well? Like, why yeah. would somebody even get... Actually, yes. Let's do that first. Yeah. Um, so, one of the things that I've put in the, in the notes, which I think is probably going to be um, appropriate to most of you listeners, not all of you, but most of you, I imagine most of you are cypreneurs. Mm-hmm. You're just getting started with the whole entrepreneurial thing, um, 
and so you've got a day job on the side most you, likely yeah. not, or not necessarily you know you're studying something mm-hmm. so when you're coming home you kind of work on your business but you've also got other bits of work to do mm-hmm. or you're your family that you're kind of taking care of and so you're kind of trying to fit your entrepreneurial sort of stuff around your right. life at the moment so this causes a bit of a dilemma Aye. because there's the whole work-life balance thing right mm. um which everybody seems to deal with these days which is well obviously doing your work but also having a bit of a life as well it's particularly more difficult if you've got a family as well that you're you know raising um so you you know you want to spend time with your family you want to do things that you enjoy and you've also got your career that you need to pursue but if you're a sidepreneur as well you've got that extra one which is your entrepreneurial activities running your business finding clients creating a website right. blah 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 so as you can imagine it's very very easy to start burning the candle at both ends mm-hmm. um and so I'd say cypreneurs, more than anybody else, is at the highest risk of burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also this other thing, mm. which I bring up a lot because I'm a bit of a Gary V nut. Yeah. Um, which is hustle. Yeah. Um, and hustle being the whole work your ass off. Yeah. Um, Use every minute of the day to get like, if the best not. results. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and if you're not working, you're wasting your time. Kind of goes back to that um, sleep episode we did as well, where mm-hmm. people say like, "Sleeps are fools," and who sleeps if you're trying to build right. your dream or your business? You shouldn't be sleeping, mm-hmm. or if you've got a spare minute of the day, you shouldn't be eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> 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 I tell myself, yeah, yeah, you should be working. Yeah, so, but that's what a lot of. Um, I feel like I outdid you yesterday when you sent me that picture of Ben and Jerry's. I was like, "Shut up, man." I had a choice of buying Ben and Jerry's. I didn't go for it. And I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look how the tables have turned. But anyway. Anyway. Um, so what's your opinion on hustle and burnout? Well, like I said there, I think a lot of people think that as an entrepreneur, you have literally got to be like working your ass to the grass. like, And it's just not, it's not feasible. It's not natural. The body is not, the body, the mind is not meant to be worked 100% of the time constantly. Because then you like you say, you can't have fans, you can't, you can't go out with your friends. You can't kind of start looking after your health. If you're constantly in front of a computer or you're constantly out trying to get clients or you're, I mean, you, you, if you're going to go all in on something, you literally have to sacrifice something else. And I think a lot of people, a lot of successful entrepreneurs or successful businessmen say that, that you, whatever you do in life, that you have to sacrifice another area mm-hmm. of your life. But I think sometimes you kind of got to really sit down and see what you actually value or why you're mm-hmm. trying to build that business in the first place. Is it to spend more time with your family? And just does that mean you want to now work your butt off for five years and then you'll take time to see your family? And I think that's what it's really about. I mean, some people might say you're stupid if you don't just go all in and you kind of spend all your whole time building your business because you'll be able to have the fun later on. But what happens if, say, five, ten years down the line, you've worked your ass to the ground, you've you've got out of shape, you're unhealthy, and then suddenly your family hates you because you can't actually spend time with them and they, yeah. they haven't seen you for the last ten years. Mm-hmm. So I think it is a balancing act. And I know Gary V is all about, oh, yeah, hustle, hustle, hustle. But to be honest, that guy has a serious... He knows how to be with his family. He knows when to switch mm. off. He knows when to be switched on. I think it's just not its not about being hustling 24-7. It's actually mm-hmm. just really being in control of your time. And I honestly don't know how he does it. I do not know how he possibly does as much. Because he's, he's on the Ask Gary V show shown his calendar mm-hmm. on his phone. On the screen, yeah, and but it's that like takes time. Like he's obviously been through it where he's probably worked his ass. Well, yeah, he's but, kind of had to calibrate along the way. But I mean, like he is literally nonstop, mm-hmm. literally nonstop, and I just yeah, but I, th- I th- can't fathom it. No, I think you can. You look at him if you look at the last few years. He's now taking his health serious. Like how much That's weight true. he's lost. That's he's got true. a nutritionist. He's got people looking after him. He's got his team doing his work he, he 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 does the work he does the creative stuff and he's got everyone else he outsources everything else to everybody else around him to take his mind off the stuff that's, that's probably very true him out. actually that's very true so he's not doing the stuff that annoys the hell out of him or bores him so mm-hmm. like most people might get burnt out just from like being in a job they hate all day and then they go home and actually when they work on their business that actually gives them energy but they're only burnt out because mm-hmm. they've been doing something they bloody hate all day long that's so. very true that's very true so that's a little bit of like intro to burnout. Mm-hmm. But how do you tell if you are headed for burnout? Mm-hmm. So uh, the two psychologists, Herbert Freudenberger, 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 yes, and Gail North, mm-hmm. two like <laughs> so opposite types of names, but there you go. Uh, 
uh, I think this was a study in the 90s um, that theorized kind of the burnout process and the fact that it can kind of be divided into these 12 different phases, um, which don't necessarily have to be in any particular order, I have to say. Um, but I just wanted to go through those 12 phases because if you are like on your way to burnout, I'm sure a lot of these you'll go, oh shit, yeah, I do that. Yeah, but I think as well, I've had a look at these phases and I think they don't like just apply to burnout. I think they apply to so many different Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Life. But I think if these start to compound, yeah, yeah. then you you know you're on your way to, to you, burnout. You're in for a shit stomp. Yeah, so if, if you've got like one of these, don't be like, oh my God, I've got to stop. Oh my God, I'm quitting. <laughs> uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> but if you've got like nine out of these 12 if you've got that kind of stress in your life you need to go back to the Dalek meditation <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so if you've got like if you've got more than you have not so let's say let, okay let's say you've got at least six of these then you probably need to go okay alarm bell should be yeah. ringing let's let's take a step back and analyse cool so right. let's, should we kick off yes let's so uh, the first one Again, these aren't in any particular order, but these are just the order that they've been mm-hmm. identified. So, the first one uh, <laughs> is a compulsion to prove oneself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, let's say you are starting your business, mm-hmm. and you've got a few people going, mm, well, I don't think uh, that that's necessarily going um, to work for you, or whatever. Um I think as well, like this, especially on this point, this this first compulsion to prove oneself is kind of like the the first phase of anybody who probably wants to get into entrepreneurship. It's kind of like mm-hmm. I want to prove that I can get go out and earn my own money. I want to prove that I can start up my own business. Or uh, I think it's usually a lot of where the first initial drive comes for people to actually pursue entrepreneurship. So it's quite interesting that that's actually in the burnout one. I guess. Although it's the drive for most entrepreneurs, I think it's actually probably not the reason why you should get into business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it usually is. It's kind of like that underdog is kind of like, I want to prove to other people that I can do something off my own back. And so it's, it's interesting that that's actually in the actual list of um, the burnouts, really. Yeah, I think so as well. But again, these it's when these start to compound that mm-hmm. it becomes, becomes a real issue. Um, I know from my perspective, this was a big one for me. Uh, and I think this is probably actually what kicked it off for me. I think uh, my burnout um, was my, I'm going to do this. I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's certainly what started off for me. So that's number one. Uh, so number two, again, no particular order, um, is working harder. Which, again, most people are going to listen to and be like, why is that a bad thing? Why should I be scared that I'm working harder? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's that... Because um, I, I remember I said to you earlier when I was showing you these, I remember you saying, like, you've become such a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's when it becomes an issue, is when it becomes workaholic as opposed to, you know, when, when you're going every day, no, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go out and socialise for an hour because I've got all this work that I need to do. When you probably don't actually need to do it, you just feel the compulsion to do it. Because again, it goes back to that sort of like working, um, don't work harder, work smarter. And, mm-hmm. and again, Philip McKernan sort of has this quote where he says like, show me a workaholic and I'll show you somebody running from something. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes that is what he's saying there is kind of sometimes people use, I'm doing loads of work, I'm working on my business as a kind of way as, I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding going into getting into relationships. I'm avoiding being mm-hmm. social. It's kind of like I'm afraid that I'm going to be a failure in those areas. So maybe I'm going to obsess about my business so that I don't have to care about not going to see my family uh-huh. or, or looking after my health because why does my health matter if I'm trying to build my business? Absolutely, yeah. And again, something that I went down that path of just not not doing any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I think another another sign is that when you kind of uh, take it upon yourself to do everything yourself, particularly if like if you're working in a team mm-hmm. um, of any sort, and it's that that sort of micromanaging because no, no, I want to get it done and blah 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 blah. Um, that can usually be a sign. Again, not necessarily on its own a bad thing, but mm-hmm. when it starts to compound with other things, there's, there's elements of it. I mean, it's good to work hard, but if you're working hard just to sort of like, as I say, fill up time that doesn't have to be really filled up, then you've got to sort of question it. Mm-hmm. 
And that does perfectly sort of lead into the number three as yes, well. Yes, which is where I was about to go. Um, so the next one, which I think I think this one more than the other two so far is where alarm bells should start to ring a little bit, mm -hmm. um, is when you start neglecting your needs. Um, so when you start skipping lunch because you've got so much work that you need to get done or um, you don't look after your health. Um, Go to bed late. Or you're mm -hmm. kind of like, do you know what? I've just realised I haven't washed for three days. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, oh, I should probably... Um, Warning, <laughs> alarm bells. I think I'm going to have to go. I've clearly been working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those sort of things, I mean, it's those basic needs. Initially, you sort of say that's Maslow's basic needs, they're covered, but mm -hmm. actually sometimes you start letting those go. So you kind of mm -hmm. stop feeding yourself well, you're kind of ordering pizza every day, you kind of haven't got time to, you're not even thinking about what time to go to bed, you just crash out. It's it's that sort of thing, really. And it's usually those very primal needs that you kind of just let go of, and actually they're the ones that you need the most to sort of sustain, to keep you in sort of some sort of mental clarity, really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then the next one is a displacement of conflict is mm. how they describe you might have to it. explain that one a little bit. Huh? Yeah, I think I need to clarify it in my head a little bit as well. Um, so this is kind of the point at which uh, the person, either yourself or someone else, um, begins to realise that something's not quite right in the way that they're dealing with whatever it is that they're dealing with. Um, they know that something's not right, but they don't seem to be able to understand what has what's actually going wrong. Could you give us a bit of an example? Because I think so. For example, somebody keeps saying to you, "You're a bit of a workaholic at the moment," mm -hmm. and rather than being like, "Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's why I'm so tired" or whatever, it's like more like, "Yeah, but it doesn't matter because I've got so much to do," and blah 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 blah. Um, you know, and, and sometimes you might even get stressy at the person acknowledging that to you. Um, so you're sort of getting sort of sometimes external people sort of saying, highlighting things that they're seeing problems in you, but you're kind of like deflecting it off. You're sort of kind of yeah. giving an excuse. I think I, right. well, I think we kind of went through that in, in our sort of year roundup where I was saying, some of my friends were saying, oh, you never come out now. I haven't seen you in ages. Da, 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 da. Right. And you're kind of like, no, 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 I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to be an uh -huh. entrepreneur and I'm trying to do this and that. And so... Mm -hmm. And then you kind of, and then when now I look back, you're like, actually, those are warnings I was sort of batting off and not really uh -huh. thinking about. Absolutely. Again, on its own, not so much of a problem, but when it starts compounding, mm -hmm. it can become a bit of an issue. So this next one is interesting. So this is where people start to change their values and their value systems. Um, so this can be, you know, when people start to isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. Um because because their values change from uh, being like a social person to becoming about work and becoming about progressing their careers and things. So they're like you see. I think you see this a lot with big successful businessmen. Um, I remember hearing when I was younger that quite often businessmen aren't family men. Mm -hmm. That's a sort of stereotype. Yeah, businessmen aren't family men. Um, and I think that's probably part of this. They probably were family men, um, and they, you know, they were building their businesses, building their success for their families. But then, in so doing, then began to neglect their family because they had so much to do in order to provide for their family. And it's like a but vicious... in their head as well, like they're thinking, "Well, I'm building this business for my family, so it's still mm -hmm. a family thing. It's just that those values are slightly tweaked now. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the business will then help with the family. Uh -huh. But it's funny because I think this one's a really interesting um, topic. This part because. You think when you look at a lot of sort of like self-help techs and kind of entrepreneurship, they always say like um, you kind of have, we even spoke about how our, our values have to change as you become an entrepreneur and how you start maybe surrounding yourself with different people. So it's kind of like really this one's this one's a difficult one because as an entrepreneur, as you start going into entrepreneurship, I think you'll naturally revise your values. Mm -hmm. It will naturally happen because you can't have these sort of maybe going out partying too often. You can't or kind of. I don't know, you have to be very organised, you have to be very sort mm -hmm. of self-disciplined, sort mm -hmm. of empower yourself. And so I think your values have to change. Yeah, I think it's an, it becomes an issue, though, when it's about values that um, are necessary values. Sort of like the universal values. S right, so when you start, um, you know, shifting the value of your health, your social life, your relationships, your um, your peace of mind, your 
finances or is whatever. This like a, is this like a, a quick shift? Is it kind of like one minute, like maybe last month you're all going out a lot, and then now for three months no one's seen you? Is it kind of, or is there no? No, time I don't. I don't really think. On? I don't think any of these can be necessarily quick shifts. Um, I think it's probably more rare for them to be quick than they are to be sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, as with anything, the, the you have transition periods, but um, you know, I mean, what the what the notes that we've got in front of me say that basically, the new value system is about your job or your business or whatever, um, and what happens then is because all of your focus is on that, you actually it's the emotional side which usually deteriorates and so it is your social life it is your relationships it is all that sort of stuff your family and things like that that begin to deteriorate because you're not putting the value on those you're putting the value on this is my business so in your in your body's kind of thinking like my job is now survival so it puts all its energy into there and obviously it kind of cuts off the what it sees as fat as extra work and so it's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of a uh, really eye-opener that maybe you're taking on too much mm-hmm. if you have it if you're having to sort of drop back on all these actual really important things or yeah definitely so the next stage um is the denial again not in any particular order um denial of emerging problems fun this burnout stuff (laughs) believe me it's not (laughs) um so yes the next one is denial of emerging problems um so this is quite often when the short temper starts to kick in um and i you know i definitely got a short temper by about halfway through the whole process um and you actually are actively avoiding social contact at this point um it's almost like you are closing yourself off from others deliberately um and not necessarily because it's about the work at this point now uh, now it's a case of okay i know i know there are problems but i don't want to deal with them yeah because otherwise people kind of if you go out into a social event it kind of highlights those problems even right. more where you just kind of know you've got them particularly when those people say to you oh you, you don't seem to spend much time with us anymore blah blah blah, blah they always blah. remind you back like you've changed right and wayne's a bit like i don't know a bit funny <laughs> hey why is it about me hey you're one of that burnout <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, quite often you'll become much more passive aggressive, um, sarcastic, um, snappy, snappy. Yep. Um, and your excuse will often be not always the case. Um, but it will often be because, you know, you've got time pressures, you know, you've got deadlines you need to meet. This has to be done by that day. You haven't got time to, to spend, uh, frivolously on going yeah, to the pub for an hour or, or yeah. right exactly yeah. exactly so that but do you think that sort of applies to a lot of people who kind of in nine to five they're all saying it's the first thing oh how are you oh, yeah, i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy oh. and so it's kind of that that was kind of gives you an excuse to be in a bit of a ratty mood or uh-huh. snappy mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> definitely definitely um so the next one this is now. This is now. We're about halfway through. This is when shit. So if you've real. already got all of these, if you're like, oh god, that sounds like. Then me. you're probably on route to burnout. It's funny though because all the ones we've just been looking at, I think sometimes these happen on sort of like a um, a daily basis. Like I got here today. Um, you were saying the other day that you were feeling a bit grumpy and no one wanted to talk to you. and You were trying to avoid being social. So I think sometimes you actually fall into these some days you just had a bad day or you're yeah. not eating well the night before or you're feeling a bit rough and so mm-hmm. i think like you say these you probably do drop in and out of these quite often yeah. but it's whether they start like compounding mm-hmm. absolutely so the next one is withdrawal um very similar to the previous one mm-hmm. uh, but this is now where like social contact is pretty much gone you are not even going out to get your food. You're ordering no. it in. You're yeah. kind of keeping yourself in clothes. I don't mm-hmm. think the curtains have been opened in a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and quite often this is the stage where people actually start turning to external sources of escape, um, which can often be like alcohol, even drugs. Those drugs. Those drugs. And this is also quite often the point where you start to have a little bit of despair. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you everything's out of, out of your control. You can't get back in control. Um, and that's why you've isolated yourself from people, because that's the only thing that you can control, mm-hmm. is the fact that you're not, that you're just on your own working. 
And obviously then I guess like because you're working so hard or you're so focused on this one thing, you naturally need a release and so you go for these really big endorphin rush releases that are kind of maybe is the drugs, maybe it is the drink and just take that edge off but then mm -hmm. you're straight back into that hard work and then you got to think each time you, I mean you don't get rid of the actual issue itself, you kind of mask it for a little while and then you're straight back in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that's a pretty dangerous one, that's where you got that, as you say, that loneliness, that sort of mm -hmm. isolation and and then that's it, you feel like you're you're dealing with everything on your own now. Mm -hmm. Because people don't want to be around you, you've already scared everybody off. Right. Which is even more dangerous because now no one's checking up on you and you feel, okay, I'm, I'm doing, still pursuing that thing, whether it is your business you're creating, it's all you, it's, this has to happen, you've destroyed everything else around you. This one's quite mm -hmm. a dark one, actually. Yeah, I think so. This is, this is where it starts to become self-destructive. Mm -hmm. um, Self-sabotage now, you're actually mm -hmm. really sort of destroying yourself your mm -hmm. body sort of saying there's something wrong and by going out and maybe drinking or doing yeah. drugs it's your body saying this is wrong but you're still still plowing right. on still pursuing and now it's actually kind of got to the stage where it's actually affecting the makeup of your brain mm -hmm. the fact that you are feeling the need to either drink or take drugs or do whatever as your escape mm -hmm. um to now it's starting to have some really physical or uh, not metaphysical. That's mm. philosoph philosophical. Uh, <laughs> it's probably what. philosophical as well <laughs> in some way, but um, but yeah, you're you're yeah messing up your own psyche. You know, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So then the next stage is obvious behavioural changes. So whereas before the passive aggression, the sarcasm might have come, the this is the stage where people are really starting to notice that you are a different person. Mm -hmm. um, there's not really much else to say on that one. It's it's when people are starting to comment. Well, it's not you just it's not just now. Oh, he's had a bad day. He's had a bad. It's no Wayne is this person. Jeremy mm -hmm. is this person. They are, and now people. That's it. Mm -hmm. People have seen a, as you say, like a really obvious change in you, and that's it. That's probably because it's starting to stick. You've started. You've it's become of, you've, hab habitual. You've, you've come into that character now. You are now playing a new a new version of yourself, mm -hmm. and that's it. And whether it's good or bad for people, obviously. Mm -hmm. The stuff that's led up to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then after that, number nine, we have depersonalization. Now, I think this is a really significant one. And we need to be careful what we say, because obviously we're not psychologists. No, no, stuff, no, so. of course. Yeah, so take what we're saying with a pinch of salt. But this is based off of a study. Um, this isn't our own research. This is mm -hmm. some research that we found mm -hmm. and are relaying to you guys. So it is literally scratching the surface of all of this stuff. But yeah, so depersonalization. So this is now the point where you're beginning to not see yourself as valuable, self-hate, um, beating yourself up. Um, and again you start to lose track of your personal needs so these are kind of like those the beginning ones but it's now you're sort of really taking them to an extreme like mm -hmm. these are seriously setting in now mm -hmm. um, yeah and, and, and basically you don't really see much future in yourself really because you've you've segregated yourself from people your relationships have probably deteriorated um, so you're probably your health. Loneliness. You're probably very, very Isolated. lonely. So now you're now you're going. Well, if I'm this lonely, if nobody's you know checking up on me or whatever, um, then um, <laughs> some thunder. <laughs> then obviously I'm not that valuable to people. Is is what is what you're starting to tell yourself. Um, That's it. You've sort of lost your identity, and now this sort of destructive person is playing out. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, which then comes kind of into the next phase. <laughs> this is just quite a depressing episode. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, try and, we'll try and pick up. We'll try uh -huh. and pick up. So this is now... You um, haven't hit rock bottom yet. You get not, there. <laughs> not quite. You're not far off, though. Um, so the next one is this kind of inner emptiness that kind of comes about. Um, and this is where you start overeating... Um, actively looking just for like again those more rushes, escape those quick sort of fixed rushes that kind of mm -hmm. help you escape from the reality that is now this person mm -hmm. who you feel depersonalized from basically it's not your identity anymore and you kind of want to escape that and that's usually again I think we mentioned that again with the drugs the drink it yeah. may be uh, but these these are kind of on a more these are on a on a bigger level because now these are about trying to uh 
provide yourself, convince yourself that you have value. I think at this stage, really, the person probably needs some psychological help. You're getting mm-hmm. pretty, pretty down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, which then leads to depression. Mm-hmm. Um, which really, I think, is this stage is really just a compounding of everything that's happened before. Um, I mean, depression is bad on its own anyway, but when you, when it's part of the burnout process, you're compounding all of that emptiness, depersonalization, the withdrawal. Hating yourself. Yeah. Dis- yeah. Disrespecting yourself. Dis- you've lost everyone around you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah, but you can see from all those all those points above, you can see why it's eventually led to that point. I think mm-hmm. if, if you acted out, if you made sure that you went through all these points and you made sure you did all of these, you'd become a pretty depressed, <laughs> burnt out person. It, yeah. It's quite easy to see, and sometimes it's nice just to actually lay them out because, like you say, there's been one or two on there that you say, oh, I've done a bit of that, or last week I felt a bit like that, or it happens, and it's quite common. Like they say, entrepreneurship, there's a lot of depression with entrepreneurship, but that's because of people not seeing these clear signs Mm -hmm. absolutely um and then finally burnout syndrome Mm -hmm. i Uh, didn't actually know it was a syndrome yeah people say i'm burnt out no 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 it's a it's a a real thing it's in that it's in a book (laughs) some psychologists wrote about it freudenberger and gail north i know you've got references so uh (laughs) so it's clearly a real thing um so yeah so this is pretty much where physical and emotional collapse happens Mm -hmm. um this is the point where really you need to be looking to seek medical intervention advice intervention yeah um and this is uh this usually gets to this stage when the depression is kicked in it's deep it's in your inner depression yeah you're in a rut and this could be where you've probably, like, if you are the entrepreneur that's got yourself this day, this is where you've probably given up on it. Mm-hmm. You probably, that's it. You've given up on the dream. Mm-hmm. You've given up on yourself. You've kind of, that's it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes uh, suicidal tendencies kick in. Damn. It's rare. It's it's not common, but it is. That's like the ultimate. When you get to this level. like. Mm-hmm. It's, it's easier not being there than actually to take on the challenges that you feel you're mm-hmm. facing so you know burnout is a serious serious issue mm-hmm. um, again all of those things on their own aren't really that much of they're well, gonna I, happen I think you flow through those on, yeah. a, on a weekly basis yeah, you go through you certain things where you just don't want to be around mm-hmm. people or you've kind of been a bit snappy one morning mm-hmm. and stuff like that but when they become a permanent thing and they start to compound that's really where you need to step in or rather step back and go whoa Mm -hmm. what's going on yeah so i think we should probably give people some guidance or maybe where they it's not all doom and gloom (laughs) people are like oh god i don't want none of that burnout stuff but then i guess it'd be good if we can sort of um yeah break down Uh how people can see when that's happening and what they can put into place Mm -hmm. to make sure that they're maybe not letting that happen so Wow, honest, I I mean, this might... episode's going on. I know. I thought maybe it might be good just to go back, look at those points, and then kind of say, at this point, this probably happened, this is what you should probably be doing. Well, no, I think I think all of these stuff are pretty manageable as a collective. Okay. Because having gone through the burnout process myself, you know the day that everything turned around for me, because I talked to you that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything that I've done since it's not really overly complicated stuff and it's yeah. what's happened is i've added these tiny things which have then compounded in reverse yeah um so just uh, as the individual yeah, ingredients yeah, yeah, yeah. of the burnout process can compound yeah, yeah. you start doing these individual positive things uh-huh. and they'll start to compound as well um one of the big ones for me one of the big big ones which really turned it around for me was meditation okay without a doubt meditation because it just it just it's that five ten minutes of your day where you just have chance to really just calm your mind Mm -hmm. um you get to focus you get to know what's important what's not important and yeah it's just i think as well with meditation you get to just sit there with those thoughts that are kind of constantly flowing but you actually get to actually question them that's the difference i think Mm -hmm. otherwise when you're just getting on with it you're not meditating 
all those thoughts are process and process are process and after each other but actually when you get to sit with them you actually get to ask the question like is this is this uh, is this real is is it, am i just making this up or is it actually true and i think that's the problem too many people's thoughts are very you're naturally gonna have a lot of negative thoughts or yeah. thoughts flowing through but to, to be able to question them then kind of takes away the power from them sometimes mm -hmm. but again i think what you said as well that might be the number one for you but you said oh, it to happen when i spoke to someone for me i think the biggest what I would see as probably the biggest help for this is actually just social, like having support, having someone Big to talk time. to. Big time, actually, somebody yeah. who's in burnout does not go and sit and say, I'm going to start meditating because that's the last <laughs> on their list. It's yeah. actually you do need that's that true, social inter intervention. And that's, that's why true. I don't think like I could be doing this sort of entrepreneurial journey myself unless I had somebody there as sort of support like yourself and kind of being able to bounce, bounce ideas off to kind of question how I feel to know that I'm having a down day, I just need to chat to somebody. Like I say, we have a lot of our sort of coffee meetups and mm -hmm. I just think social is, is is vital for entrepreneurs and, and it doesn't mean being social with maybe the old, the old people around you who aren't doing the kind of things you're doing. I think with entrepreneurship, you need to be surrounded by those people who are pursuing or are do, have, do have those sort of dreams that you do too. Yeah, definitely. And again, that, that day where I turned things around was because I had that chat with you. Mm -hmm. Well, partly. I think it was a significant part because I just went, I don't like who I am anymore. I've become a horrible person to be around. I've got these issues which are bugging me because I haven't resolved them and blah, 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 blah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what you need. You need people to be the outsider to kind of see and kind of relay them back to you. But, like, it probably took a lot for you to actually suddenly realize all those things because initially you're kind of ignoring them like you say you've got that depersonalization you don't see those things wrong in you mm -hmm. and obviously that sort of stimulated the conversation and then yeah getting back in contact with people and actually letting somebody be there to sort of actually ready to say yeah when you have been a bit of, bit of this and that and you kind of need to be mm -hmm. woken up and be like oh it's actually true how i feel <laughs> yeah definitely um i think another big thing particularly early on is really work out actually what you're spending your time doing um, as Gary Vaynerchuk says, 97% of the things that you do probably don't matter. Mm -hmm. And they probably don't move you forward. It's just work for the sake of work. Um, he says, stop focusing on dumb shit. Yeah. And I think if you can start to identify actually what the stuff is worth doing, what stuff's probably worth outsourcing, um, or just not doing at all. Yeah, that's the problem. Though. As, as you said before, it's like some people just feel the need to be busy, mm -hmm. and that's a problem in itself. There's something underlining that. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, bloody reward yourself with some downtime. That's one of the biggest changes I've made, and I feel so much more fulfilled because there will be days where I'm like, no, I'm not feeling working today. It's just yeah, not going to happen. Gonna happen yeah. So obviously my brain needs to relax. So I'm going to relax. I'm going to pop on a film. I'm going to play some Xbox or whatever. Whatever it is that just chills you out. Um, or alternatively, get a hobby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something that's not work-related that fulfills you. Whether that's, I don't know, going out playing squash. Or... Well, that's like for me. For me going to the gym, people say, oh, it's tiring, it's aching. Like for me, gym is like a meditation for me. It's mm -hmm. so like, it's it's unbelievably relaxing. I feel like I zone out, my brain's clear of thoughts. All I'm thinking about is the weights and people might say that's crazy. But that's for me, is my relaxation. Or to me to say, Wayne, you want to go meet up and grab a coffee and mm -hmm. want to go grab some breakfast or something like that. That's sort of the time where I sort of allow myself to be off. And then, then you've got actually what you find is you've got so much more energy when you return back to your computer uh -huh. and more clarity and you've, mm -hmm. you've stopped your brain thinking about the problem for a bit and it's gone to work without you in the back of your mind and then you turn up and you suddenly figure things out and I think that's what people miss out on really. Yeah, definitely. And talking about energy, energy. Uh, I'm going to briefly mention quality of sleep. We've done an episode or two on sleep quality. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so go check out the archives. We're not going to go back. I think that's number one. If you're not hydrated and you're not sleeping, like shit is going to go bloody mm -hmm. bad fast. Those things. You know people. You know people around who are bloody always moaning about their sleep. They're always grumpy and mm -hmm. lack of energy. They look like shit. It's kind of get those sorted. They're like number one. Yeah. And another thing which a lot of people do. I've done it once or twice, and it has. I think you've got to get your system right. But power napping take a nap oh, yeah. in the middle of the day yeah um just to kind of let yourself recharge a little bit i've been doing these a lot recently actually for the last two weeks i've been powering that oh, okay. I, I just find literally i'm even though it's like 
15 minutes I, I usually put on like a I don't know like a motivational sort of like YouTube video and I'll just lay in my bed and I end up like falling asleep for like I set my alarm like I put I don't want to be asleep too long I think they say don't go any longer than like 20 30 minutes well there's a li- there's a little trick that I've heard okay. I've not tried it yet yeah but this is supposed oh, to be a good one on the keys to, yeah yeah hold on to your keys yeah so if you if you are sleeping in a chair or lying on the sofa or whatever just have your keys in your hand yeah. and just kind of hanging over the edge and what will happen is when you get to the level of sleep where actually you're losing control yeah. physically the point where you're about to go into a deep sleep yeah. you'll naturally drop your keys which should wake you up do you know up. who that came from? I can't Sound remember or Dali. was that it? yeah because okay. the painter you know the surrealist painter so he used to do that That's so it. he would yeah, remember yeah. all these wacky sort of dreams you'd have uh-huh. and he'd wake up and then suddenly start painting but yeah, now that's but that should one. be the perfect point at which you, yeah. if you sleep any longer, you'll end up feeling yeah. drowsy. I usually say it for like twenty minutes, I and, do then, as well. and then I put a YouTube video. It takes me about five minutes to sort of nod off slightly. Mm-hmm. I wake up about ten minutes later, and it's been fifteen minutes, but I feel like so, like like the clarity is back, and I feel re-energized. And mm-hmm. I think it's enough sometimes. Obviously. Not everybody can crawl off into their office in there no. or where at lunchtime have a sleep, but if you do have that capability, <laughs> I think it can be very powerful. And the same as meditation, if you just take that 10, 5 minutes at meditation yeah. time. Yeah, definitely. Just stepping away, really. Um, I think another one, life margin. We've talked about this a few times with um, daily routines and ideal work weeks and things like that. Um, and just setting your clear boundaries. If you don't, like when I was at uni... I people were fascinated. I'd say I never, I never do any work on a Saturday, and I never work past nine p.m. People were like, "How on earth do you do that?" It's like I've just managed my time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I, unless I was super super busy, I'd stick to that. And it just really, really helps keep a really nice life balance. So if you don't want to work past 5 p.m., don't work past 5 p.m. Because you'll probably find you'll still get all the stuff done anyway. You'll just do it mm-hmm. quicker. Um, so just set your clear boundaries. And um, finally, I think this is all of them. Finally, turn off your notifications every now and then, even if it's just for an hour. Uh, one of the best features on, I think, Android and iPhone is do not disturb. Use it. I, use it I stick my phone in airplane mode usually when I just or airplane me, mode yeah. to people I'm just like okay switch off from everything just use it take a couple of hours where you're just not plugged into technology and my god will you feel the difference you'll feel so much more focused and and you'll probably get a lot more shit done and you'll be less stressed because you won't have people going have you done this for me have you done that for me or I need this doing or yeah, yeah right exactly so yeah utilise that I think that's it is that it? I think that's mostly it. But yeah, I think I think like a lot of these things, I think there are early warning signs, whether it's people around you telling you things, whether it's your health, whether you look down, you've got a big gut. <laughs> all kinds, all of these sort of add up. And to be honest, the actual cure is bloody easy. It's like, think about it, you're a human being, you need water, you need sleep, you need socialising, very basic things you need. Like just because you're building a business, do not neglect your actual human nature. Mm-hmm. Like, do the things that actually make you happy and know what makes you happy and just keep adding those in around the hard work that you're doing. But as I say, if you're building a business, it should be a pleasurable experience. It doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be feeling like you're busting the gut, feeling like you're waking up before you feel like you're ready to. That's not right. That's not a good way of living. And you're not getting any bonus points for that apart from feeling like shit. So, And also, if you get to that stage where that's happening, you're kind of losing out on all the good bits about being an entrepreneur, really. Mm-hmm. You've kind of sacrificed all the good bits for more work, which is kind of... Obviously, that's not why you've become an entrepreneur, but it's got its benefits, and you've kind of just discounted all of them. Yeah, you quit nine to five so that you can work six till bloody ten or something. That's just not a good trade-off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, just, just be mindful. And again, don't worry if you've just got one or two on that list of of signs of burnout but if you've got a significant amount um then take a step back and just consider all of these things that we've said to you at the latter half of this episode you know maybe you're not sleeping well enough or maybe you're not keeping fit or maybe you're not meditating or maybe you're just not deciding when and when and when no when you do and do not work that's it (laughs) that's what i was trying to say um so yeah so just consider those um with regard to when you do and do not work just take a look at michael hyatt's blog about his ideal work week i've used it and it's really helped me to manage my time um so yeah just go to michaelhyatt.com type in ideal work week and the blog post should come up 
And so as a uh, recovering burnout e Wayne, um, how do you now feel? Um, <laughs> I, I still think I'm not fully recovered, but then I think that's because I've not given myself time to recharge, mm-hmm. basically. Um, but do you feel like you're now more aware, you're more, you can I'm see what's I'm definitely it's more back. aware of it. Like, I'm not, it, as I said, if I'm having days now where it's like, no, work's not going to happen today, I don't force it. Um, because I, you know, I have that freedom, thankfully, and not everybody does, but I do. So I don't force it if I don't feel like it's going to happen or, you know, I'll at least work for one or two hours and then that's it. Um, but I won't like push myself to work really, 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 really hard because you need to be aware of, and, and, you know, as I said to you recently, like I was finding I couldn't focus for more than one or two hours anymore. Mm -hmm. Then that was like, for me, I was like, okay, that's a warning sign. I need to take some time off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have done. And I still think I need a little bit more time than I've taken. Okay, well, we'll give but, you that time off in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Fucking... <laughs> 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 You're wearing me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, um, I'm definitely in a better place now from having taken that time off than I was before. Cool. So just mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Be aware. Look after yourself. Mm-hmm. But I'll... before we go... Before we go... We do need to ask... A favour. Yeah. We've not had a review for a while, guys. And we do need reviews. And we do need reviews. Not for our own ego, but just to kind of push us up in the iTunes charts. The algorithm loves our reviews. It pushes us up, gets us more listeners. We Mm -hmm. can help more people. We can protect against burnout. We certainly can. And people are loving the stuff that we're putting out. We hear. So we hear. And we want more people to hear about it if it's that good let people know so all you have to do is just hop onto itunes write us a review tell us what you think of the show tell other people what you think of the show and you'll make us two very happy chappies yep cool so that's all that's all we're asking of you so be mindful don't work yourselves too hard but don't be lazy either. All right. Go. Cool. Have a lovely week. And we will see you next Friday. At 9 a.m. 9 a.m. GMT. See you later. Bye.